YouTube, it's Craig here, and I'm back with a new video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about an update to my Waterman's collection, so let's get right into it. When I started collecting Waterman's Ideal Fountain Pens, again, back in November, there was no rhyme or reason to what I was collecting. My first one, the 12VP, I liked it for the flex. The nib is a little messed up, a little bent, but it does flex really nicely. But that's what, I, what got me back into them, was the fact that you could flex these pens and really get amazing line variation out of them. Then I got something like a, this is a 42 and a half safety pen, those 18 karat gold bands on it. I just thought it looked unique and it's not necessarily unique or anything like that. I mean, it's something different. Then I went for, you know, the more conventional number 52s. So here's a 52 in wood grain, but this thing has gotten great use. It flexes nicely. Just a solid number 52. Then I got really into silver pens. So here we have a 452. This one's inked up right now, but this is a great writer. And then you have the more unique 52X that I found on eBay. It's this gigantic number 55 body, with the tiny little number two size nib. I do love this pen a lot. Super weird. Chasing looks awesome on this thing. But there you go, like I, I had these pens and I didn't really have a sense of direction for this collection other than just trying to get as many 52s as possible or as many Waterman's pens as possible. But that all changed when Greg Sheik posted on his Instagram that he had found this old receipt from April 2nd, 1928 with these Waterman's number sevens. And I didn't know anything about the Waterman's number seven, but you can see they were $7. So $42, but there was a 40% discount on it. So it was only $25.32 for these six pens. And I just thought it was really cool. I just thought it was very unique and different. There's a lot of ephemera out there. There's a lot of receipts out there, but nothing with the Waterman's number seven on there. And I just thought they were really cool. Like I said, I didn't know anything about them. So much so that when I went to my first pen show, the LA International Pen Show, Greg and I walked up to Mike Daigle's table and there were some pens laying out and there were several Waterman's number sevens. And I walked up and I saw the red and the green. I said to Greg, like, which one should I go for? And he said, the red is the more desirable one. I go, oh, how do you know? He goes, do you know anything about the Waterman's number seven? To which I replied, no, I don't. <laughs> I had no idea that there was a difference in the nibs. Several months later. I was actually able to complete that receipt and I have six Waterman's number sevens. I actually have seven Waterman's number sevens, but this is my parts pen. And this was actually my first one. It is a Canadian red that I bought from Mike Daigle's table, which came from Cliff Harrington. But this isn't the original cap that came with this pen, but this is my parts pen. So this barrel is gonna get used for one of my pens and I'm probably gonna sell the nib separately, but it's a good parts pen. It's got some good hardware on it, but this cap is going in the mail tomorrow and it's going off to a guy named James up in Washington who is looking for a cap. But these are my Waterman's number sevens. This one I actually got from the Orange County Pen Meetup and it is a first generation. You can tell by the one solid band. There, are, there were no white bands on the original generation. It has the clip cap on there, which they stopped doing in 1928. So this is about 1927. You can see the seven on the bottom of the barrel end. And this one has a very mint red US made nib. So the red is the more standard. It writes about a medium with, with some flex. Very nice overall. Second pen I got was the green. The green is very rigid. So it's supposed to be like hardened as tempered steel. This is a Canadian nib but it writes like a, like a medium, um, but it's very, very, very stiff. There is no flex, no give whatsoever to this pen. And this one also has a Canadian barrel. It says made in Canada on the side. There's the number seven on the bottom. And this one has a little bit higher cap compared to the others. On my green, the original grip section had a crack in it. Really hard to see on these things. Ever so slight, tiniest little crack. But Greg Sheik of the Antique Digger was nice enough to replace. But this also came from Mike Daigle's table, courtesy of Cliff Harrington. Next is the purple. 
I actually have a brand new purple cap band that I needed to install still on this pen. I just can't get the cap band off and I'm afraid to, uh, afraid I'm gonna ruin it, but it has a black cap band on it right now. Or maybe it's purple that faded, I'm not sure. But this one has a really bad lever on it. You can see the plating has come off on it. So I'm gonna replace this barrel with my replacement barrel. It's the seven on the bottom there. And the purple was the accountant's nib. So it is a stiff fine and it writes really well. This actually isn't the original purple nib that I had on this pen. The original purple nib had no tipping material. This is the original purple nib that I had on this pen. But if you look very closely, you can see that it's missing part of the tipping material. So Greg Sheik of the Antique Digger was nice enough to replace it. And now I have a purple nib that actually writes. It just needs a new lever. The next pen on this little list is my pink. And I just bought this from Mauricio Aguilar from vintagepen.net. You can see it's got ink in it right now. I've been writing with it. There is the coveted pink nib, those long tines. It's extremely flexible. This pen actually had the most brassing. That was the original cap. You can see it's just, you know, you can see the rivets in it. The brassing is insane. The amount of brassing on the ball clip. And I replaced the cap on this pen with the one from my red. This just came in. This is what completed this original six. Awesome, I'm stoked to have that in my collection. I was gonna think about it forever if I didn't just buy it, so I just bought it. This is a blue, it has a great cap band on it, but this is also courtesy of Mike Daigle, but through Cliff Harrington's collection. And the blue is also pretty hard to find, but it is a stub nib and it writes so good. This is a great pen. So it looks great on it. Imprints look great on it. Awesome, no complaints on this one. The old school clip cap on there. And the last one of this set is the yellow. And this came from Sarge Minhas's table, the one man pen show. And it costs a lot for a yellow, but yellows are slated as being the left-handed user's pen. It has a ball nib on it. It actually has some good flex on it. It writes about a medium, but more of a flexible medium. And this is a great pen. So I actually finished the Los Angeles International Pen Show with a red, a green, a purple, and a yellow. Though my red had a Canadian nib and my green is a Canadian pen. And then about a month later, I got the nicer red from the Orange County Pen Hangout. That's when I decided to make my other red into the parts pen. And then I acquired the blue last week and the pink this week. There you go. There are my six Waterman's number sevens. I just have brown, gray, and black to go, and then I've completed the set. There's also the white, which has only been seen on some trays. It's never been seen in person, but the white is apparently coarse or broad, and who knows if it'll ever be found. If it was made, I am on the in the camp that it was never actually printed on the nib white, but who knows, maybe one of these days I can find one. That'd be pretty cool. It's a needle in a haystack, that's for sure. And I'll be doing a writing sample with each of these and kind of doing a deep dive video on each pen. I just wanted to give you guys an overview of what my Waterman's collection has been over the last two months. And thanks for checking it out. And that's the video. Thanks so much for checking out, you guys. If you have any questions about the pens, go and leave a comment down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more content like this and check out my Instagram, at Craig Rockanova, and we'll see you guys in the next video. All right, peace.